this is, um, well, it's kind of hard to pin down what this is. In a more literal sense, this is a Sony XV-C900 video multicolor corrector. Basically, it's a fancy post-processing beast for composite and S-video signals. Sony is big on video and broadcasting equipment, so it makes sense they'd make something weird like this. I'm not sure what year this was made. Let's leave that to editing Akbakuku to say if he saw any dates on the chips inside when I open this up later. It looks like this thing was made around 1991. This is one of those things where when you see it at a thrift store, it immediately catches your eye. All those knobs, buttons, and joysticks make for a very weird looking video device. If we take a look at the back, we can see it's only meant for composite and S video. No component here, but that really doesn't matter. Hardly anything used component. And most things that did, you could do over HDMI now anyway. Alright, so I've hooked up my Atari Jaguar to this, and we're ready to see how this thing works. So, first thing you should know is that what you're seeing right now is actually unmodified. If I push bypass here to disable the bypass, we can see it actually looks quite a bit worse. Now, you can do a split screen here and compare both sides at once, and when we get to this screen, we can see how much worse off the side that it's actually doing the modifications on is compared to the original. But, we can tweak it just a tad and get it quite a lot closer. And now it's almost impossible to distinguish which side is which, and if we disable the split screen here, uh, we can see that it looks pretty good. Now if we go back and forth between the two, we can see that the output from this unit actually looks a lot sharper. It's clearly doing some kind of processing on the pixels that so makes them a little bit crisper. Now, it could just be a sharpening mask that it's applying, but I have a suspicion that it's doing a bit more than that. Now that we have the colors dialed in to match a bit better, let's go ahead and take a look at what this does. So I'm going to do split screen, and this will allow us to see the difference between the original on the right and the modified on the left. So, this thing's self-stated main claim to fame is the ability to do color balancing. Now, we can color balance the dark colors and the light colors separately. Now, the ability to distinguish those is a little difficult. Um, now, we can obviously also do gamma and hue and uh, color saturation. Now, one thing I'm really not quite sure about is the microphone input here. I'm not sure what use a microphone would be on this thing, unless you're some high roller trying to do some kind of color balancing that you also need to dub at the same time. Now, this is the feature I will probably get the most use out of. This allows you to select four separate video inputs, although you do only get two composite and two S video. You gotta admit, this is probably the coolest looking thing that can act as a video switcher. But, that's just the left side of the controls. The right side is much more interesting. Now, first I'm going to go all the way over to this knob on the right, which doesn't appear to do anything. This is actually used to set a back color or backdrop. What backdrop do I hear you say? Why, this one. This is where this thing gets really interesting, but also really confusing to me. You can transition between your main video source and a selection of different colors and a color bars with either a fader or a white transition. You can even set an automatic wipe down here. It also has this unusual video art dial which you can use to set a bright point to where it will begin to fade with this, and you can reverse it to set it as a dark point. These controls over here only affect the fader. We can fade to black, and we can also adjust the audio level as we fade. Just a couple more buttons. We can reduce some chroma noise, which you can see around the clouds in this area. That might actually look better. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that on. And we can reverse the image. Now, one thing I haven't been able to figure out is why anyone would want to transition to these weird backdrops. My best guess is that Sony must have also sold some kind of chroma key hardware that could look for a specific color in a video signal 
and mix two separate video sources together. But this color bar signal clearly indicates that this unit could do this itself. Why wouldn't they have just put another input on the rear to have your own custom backdrop image? Hmm, that gives me an idea. Now I haven't looked inside of this thing yet, but ideally I'd open this up and I'd find separate video generator circuits for all of these colors. Now that's not very likely. What's most likely is this knob is connected to a single chip that can do all these video signal generations. Now I think that the color bars is pretty useless on here, but if I could replace that with a second video input on the rear, I definitely want to do that. Elsewise, I may just cut a trace somewhere in the board and splice in a connector and a switch on the back. Oh wow, okay, there is a lot more going on in here than I expected there to be. We have one, two, three layers of video processing boards. We have a power supply over here. We have a separate control board system up front. It's all labeled into separate categories for each region of the circuit. Oh man, this, this thing is both a monstrosity and a beauty at the same time. There's so much going on. I should have really expected it to be like this with how many features it has, but wow, it's just so unexpected. Based on all the Toshiba chips on the board, I'm going to say this thing was made in roughly 91. Wow, there are so many cables going to so many layers of boards here that I'm really not that thrilled about the concept of trying to take this thing apart. I mean, I can see at the bottom here that whoever assembled that one was putting red dots on the connector so you can tell which one goes where. And I can see that happened at least once on the top, but most of the other ones aren't marked. They don't have labels on the cables themselves. They have these yellow things down here, but they seem to be just for wire management. It's, this just looks like an absolute nightmare to try and put back together. I may have been dealt a pretty solid break though, because the very first section on the top of the board, right at the front, is labeled Back Color Gen. This may be the generator for the color signals that we can transition to. However, I traced all these wires down to where they go, and none of them go up front to the knob. What I'm guessing is the knob wire here goes down to the very bottom board and has nothing to do with this. So the bottom board may be some kind of logic board that controls everything else on the unit. Now there are two chips in this section that look the most likely to be the video signal generators. This Sony one that is probably a custom chip for this device, and this one which I think I see a Mitsubishi logo down there that clearly has a thermistor attached to it. If we go ahead and pull that out, we can see the model number for that chip as well. So let's look those up. All right, after some digging, it seems like that Sony chip is the most likely candidate. It looks like these two pins here are probably our chrominance and luminance out for S-Video. So I'm going to grab a scope and let's see if these match the output down here, at least somewhat, when we have the knob set to color bars or any of the other colors. If this is it, then I should be able to cut and splice somewhere on here and interject my own video signal instead. However, if it's demuxing everything to S-Video first, then at best I may only be able to put an S-Video signal into this, not an S-Video or composite. Okay, we have several problems going on at once here. So first off, let me adjust the color knob so you can see that that is indeed working. And you can see that we are seeing changes on the CRT. Now, here's the thing. I have a dual trace up here, so here is the uh, chip itself. Here is the video output, and here are both of them. Now, the uh, grounds are the same already. Well, mostly the same. But we can see what's coming out of the video chip as a large DC offset compared to the signal coming out of the S-Video port. Additionally, if we zoom in, and here we can also see that the signal is missing the sync pulse coming out of the chip. So we can be sure that this chip isn't the final stage in the signal generation for the background color. Well, the Mitsubishi chip seems like it's possibly some kind of composite to S-Video converter chip. I'm not 100% sure about that. It's a chroma decoder. But the chroma signal coming out of it is uh, massively DC offset compared to the main signal. So again, it's not quite something I'm going to be able to hack into. After getting a little bit braver to figure out where the signal goes after it comes out of the bottom side of this chip, I've determined that this thing's actually extremely well designed for service. The two boards on top here both pivot and allow you access to underneath of them. It's really well done. It still doesn't stop this thing from being an absolute monster of design though. It's a good thing this does work. I would hate to have to recap it. And so many trim pots, man. That's gotta take forever to properly calibrate one of these. 
You know, I'm unabashedly a fan of Sony products. Look at this level of detail here. There's this little hook out in the middle of nowhere, and when you pull the circuit boards back, there's this channel that this screw can slide along. Well, you put that hook back there, pull the screw forward, and then it locks that board in place, so it can't fall forward while you're working on this area. This is just so well designed. All right, using the tried and true method of beeping around, I was able to figure out where the video signal goes when it leaves the top board where the color gen happens and gets to the second board where all the wiping and fading happens. Now, this signal here is what is coming out of the S-Video port, and if we drop down to the signal that goes to this board, we can see that we're still missing the sync pulse, and we're at about half the signal strength. So if I change the scale of this as opposed to this, we can see that they're actually just about the same. Now, the uh, signal here still has about a 2.5 volt DC offset, so it's way far up, but it's it's still missing the sync signal. Now I'm afraid that if I try and jam a video signal in here with the sync signal, it's just not going to work, and I'm pretty sure that it won't be happy with that. So I think I might be calling off the concept of trying to stick another video port on the back of this thing. If we look down here, we'll see we have a separate sync section. Now, my suspicion at this point is that after the top two boards get done modifying the video signal by mixing multiple signals together, they're sent down to the bottom to get one final sync pulse added before they're sent out to the connectors on the back. So this thing is going to be working with mostly unsynced video up here. Now, I'm not saying I think this is impossible. If I was going to really try and do this, I would get a video desyncing chip and make a little circuit board that goes somewhere in here that desyncs a signal from an input on the back. Then I would make a little splice switch thing that taps off of right there and try and interject my own signal in there. But for right now, I don't have a video desync chip, and this thing's cool enough as it is. Maybe I'll try and find a video chroma key device like I was thinking this thing would be used with originally. Now, I don't have any evidence that a chroma key device exists to go along with this thing, and I tried pretty hard to find one before I started filming. So I'm not sure if that idea is true, but you gotta admit, this thing could be used to do a pretty darn good job of chroma key in real time. Well, I think this makes for an interesting look at the uh, Sony Multi-Video Color Corrector XVC900. It's a shame it doesn't have an alternative video input for the uh, cooler patterns, because, I mean, these all really suck. I don't know why anyone would really want these. I mean, again, except for the uh, the possibility of being able to chroma key. I mean, that kind of makes sense. But outside of being able to chroma key, there's really not a whole lot of reason to. So I just, I don't understand. I'm going to have to try and track down a chroma key device because it just has to exist to make this ha make any sense at all. Now I did determine this is the highest end model they made for a video color corrector. There is an XVC700. It seems to only allow you to color balance the whole image at once, not light or dark, and it doesn't deal in S-Video. But that pretty much covers everything I wanted to with this device. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, I'll see you next time.